So this next question is, are people experiencing war living out their ancestral karma or are they just learning from a contrast to learn more about self? You know, this is a, this is a great question because I actually study war quite a bit. I think it's uh, probably because in genetically, I think there's some that are actually more genetically war disposition to warriors. And this could be also because let's say when you grow up in a, in a tribal setting, they're going to definitely single out the men that have a certain type of genetic thing. Maybe they're tall, you know, maybe they, they're athletic build. You're going, you're going to go defend the tribe. And if that happens five or six generations, then it's just going to naturally feel like your thing is to defend the tribe. Okay. And then you're even going to find that you're kind of geared very well to do that even genetically. So because of that, I often think about wars myself and I think about people engaged in war. And in fact, my my biggest contrast in this reality that I, I work to stay, that I work to help me balance is actually war zones and people that are actually experiencing so much trauma, especially if I can't really harmonize with why they're experiencing that. Like, for instance, there's wars going on right now, even in Gaza. There's wars going on in Iran. There's, there's sanctions. There's all this stuff. And then you see these, you know, even the men, you see men and women alike and women and children. And then you see them experiencing this torrential nightmare going on with the external reality and war. And, you know, rather than, you know, trying to offer an actual answer to that, I only can give you a little bit of insight into what I think is actually going on. What I think is going on is that what our DNA, like as far as from our children, like from the time that we're like as a child, then our father, then his father and mother, their mother, et cetera, is that we're carrying this dinonucleic balance, okay? Like literally like a bank account. And that in each generation, it's like your mothers and fathers, and then it becomes your responsibility it becomes each generation, it becomes a responsibility to synthesize the experience, to actually weed out what is deceptive and what is distortion in the experience. And when we don't do that, then what happens is the next stage of our DNA inherits those imbalances. Okay. And I believe that we can be misled by others suggesting to us, and I think that religion has done so much of this, it is the number one culprit of this, suggesting to us these levels of separations that exist on the highest level, i.e. that gods are not liking each other. My dad can whoop your dad. Because that's really where it actually comes from, is that when you have tribal feuds, it's really family members, elders even, going at it with each other and even some of them losing their lives. Like, my God is more powerful than your God, right? And then what this produces, because all of this is, is obviously the greatest stage of immaturities, is it produces these distortions like what you even see when people are praying to God about helping them destroy someone. Like you see people in Israel, hell help us. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we ask for God to help us in, in, in our struggles and bringing, and it's like, whoa, buddy, stop. If you're praying to the God that you're saying is in this book that has all this power and it's, and it's still wars and things going on, it would be common sense for you to understand that obviously that God is either not involved or that concept of that God that you have is actually propelling that. But that's why common sense is not common when you are hypnotized. Religion, to me, is one of the greatest, greatest stages of hypnosis because it works on the highest faculties of what you can perceive as being greater than self or part of self. So this is also Islam alike. And so these two being locked into this, this war and then the parents not really balancing it out but perpetuating it is spreading to the children on a nationwide level. And so this is what I feel like that war zones are consist, consist of is that this debt based system where, oh, because you killed my uncle, even something that you don't even know happened because you kill X, Y, Z. Now we have to act out this lifetime in war. And this also could happen even within things like uh, slavery and things like, let's say, white versus black and all these different things that keep one locked into this quarrel where one can literally say, I'm going to spend the rest of my life fighting this battle of basically trying to, uh, to balance out this, this atrocity. When really, to balance out an atrocity, 
you can we wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do it that way. You can't balance out atrocity by creating another atrocity. That's like what they call fighting fire with fire. You just set the whole thing ablaze. So I think that that doesn't become as obvious when you're in heated battle, just like it doesn't become obvious when you're in an argument. Some people want to defend themselves. They don't want to actually use the technique that is going to bring the resolution. They just really want the other person to feel the pain that they experienced or to feel the retribution, right? So that's what I feel personally is happening. And I feel like that it's happening on such a massive scale. It's become infective because when you see someone else do something, then you also feel like you're entitled or even uh, uh, responsible for also doing it. And then I feel like that those who have removed themselves from that environment, but starting for digging deep first, which would be the religious tradition, many of the, uh, the, the so-called customs that have been learned that actually are not harmonic customs. When they start digging deep and removing that, they actually find themselves getting away out of those spaces altogether, whether that's they actually get accepted as refugees, if you may, into another country. That country is not so hostile. They start raising a family there. Now, two or three generations later, they're not experiencing that type of war-like environment. And so that's what I believe personally is going on. I feel like that I could easily be, if I hadn't adapted a certain stage of my own level of awareness and adepthood, still in the hood, still at the, uh, the meet and greets where, you know, they're talking about who the enemy is and all those different kind of things. And would that really propel me into the stage of consciousness that I would, would be my, my gift and my inheritance and my allotment? I wouldn't even really know anything about that. All I would know is this struggle and, and I wouldn't even know how to get out of that struggle except for by using things that actually would entwine me deeper into that struggle. So that's what I feel like is going on. And yeah, I mean, this is an ode to everyone in realization that there's a lot of responsibility that goes on when you put a child into this world. And when you don't adhere to that responsibility, meaning you don't really realize that, hey, if you're teaching your child this and you haven't checked back and seen where the origin of this even is coming from, because that child is you, you're going to reap what you sow from what you are teaching because that's how all of this has to work. So nothing is being done wrong, and that may sound wild to you, but that's exactly how it is. Nothing is really being done wrong because you're saying, I'm going to add four and four, and the reality is going to give you eight. But you may be looking for nine. You may be looking for other numbers. You may be looking for another outcome. But that is not what you put into the computational system. And you can then even be trained. This is how you get to what you're looking for, even though there will be no examples. If not, there may be one or two. In a place of nine billion, there'll be one or two examples of somebody who was able to reach it that way. But for the masses, they won't be able to reach it that way. But that's what we say. Common sense ain't common. Hypnosis will prevail. Emotions will take over. And then one will be locked in and tied into this warlike loop that is also happening in the consciousness because people that are polarized at times into these different fields, these ideals, politics, religion, all of that kind of stuff, they're extremely polarized so these wars are also taking place in their consciousness and then like I said someone throws fire onto it by killing an aunt bombing a country and this locks these forms of consciousness into a never ending battle until someone decides and many walk away from these battles one at a time until there's nobody standing on that battlefield then those wars will continue